Hello and welcome to another episode of STEM with Mr N, where every week I'll be performing different demonstrations and explaining the science behind what we're seeing. This week I put my faith in science and put my face on the line as I explored the conservation of energy. Let's check it out. The law of the conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it does get transferred into different types of energy. Last week, we explored heat and light energy when we made solar ovens. This week, we're going to explore two different types of energy. These are potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, if we look at this marble sitting on the counter in front of me, it has no energy. It's not moving anywhere. If I knock it, it rolls along the counter towards me. I used energy to give the marble energy and the type of energy I gave it was kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. Now that I'm holding the marble up in the air though, it now has potential energy. If I let the marble go, it's not going to stay floating in the air. So as soon as I let it go, gravity is going to put kinetic energy into the marble and it's going to move down towards the ground. If you want to know more about gravity, I did a video on that a few weeks ago that you can check out. Now, as this marble was moving, when it was rolling along the counter or when it was falling through the air, it was heating up what was around it. When it was dropping down, it was heating up the air around about and when it's rolling on the counter, it's going to add some heat to the counter. This is the kinetic energy being transferred into heat energy. Elastic bands also rely on a transfer of potential energy to kinetic energy. Right now, the elastic band has no energy other than the potential to fall to the ground. But when I pull it back, the elastic band now has the potential, if I let it go, to turn into kinetic energy and it will send it flying across the room. Kinetic energy can also be transferred into more kinetic energy. In front of me I've got four marbles lined up all touching and I've got one marble back here. If I knock this one marble into the other four, you see it sends one marble away and now I've got four marbles still sitting here. This time I've still got four marbles lined up touching but I've got two marbles back here. I'm going to knock these two marbles into the four marbles in front. And that time, two marbles get knocked away and I've got four marbles lined up here. Why in the first experiment did only one marble get knocked away, but the second time round, two marbles get knocked away? This is because, as I said earlier, the law of the conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. When I knock one marble into the four marbles in front, it only has the energy of one marble moving. So it can only knock away one marble and transfer its kinetic energy onto that marble. When I knock two marbles into the group, it is moving with the kinetic energy of two marbles. So that energy then gets transferred into the four and it's enough to knock two marbles away. So why is it important to understand the conservation of energy? Well, here I've got a boiled egg and here I've got a raw egg. And we're going to see what happens to these with the transfer of energy when we set them in motion. We'll start with the boiled egg. Now when it's sitting on the counter, it has no energy at all. I'm going to give this egg some kinetic energy, then stop the egg and we're going to see what happens. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the raw egg. So why when I spun the boiled egg and put my finger on it to stop it and then took my finger away, did the egg stay still? But when I did the same thing with the raw egg, did it start to turn again? It is because in the boiled egg, 
all of the contents have hardened and are filling the whole space. So when I spin the shell, everything inside spins together. With the raw egg though, when I spin the shell, everything inside starts to spin. But when I put my finger on the shell and stop it and take my finger away, the shell has stopped, but the fluid inside the egg is still spinning. This is important because when you are in a car and a car puts its brakes on, the car stops moving, but you are actually still moving inside the car. That is why you need to wear a seatbelt to transfer your kinetic energy moving forward into the seatbelt. Otherwise, when the car suddenly stopped, you would keep moving. For our next demonstration, I have two plastic bottles which have been half filled with water and I've tied some string round the top of them. I am going to tie these onto another piece of string and use these bottles to demonstrate the transfer of potential energy into kinetic energy and then that kinetic energy also being transferred down a line. When I pull the first bottle back, ready to let it swing, I am giving that bottle potential energy. When I let it go, gravity is going to try and pull it down to the ground, but because it's tied on with a bit of string, that is going to pull it down, but it's going to swing underneath. That is a transfer of potential energy to kinetic energy. When the bottle is swinging, it is transferring its kinetic energy into the string it's tied onto, and then that is running down the other piece of string into the second bottle, and it starts swinging. Now, when the second bottle starts swinging, you'll notice the first bottle is slowing down. That is because the first bottle is transferring its kinetic energy to the second bottle. The second bottle will then also transfer its kinetic energy back the way. Now remember I said that energy can't be created or destroyed, but it gets transferred into other types of energy. Well, here we're seeing kinetic energy being transferred between two objects, but they are also losing energy to their surroundings. As the bottles are swinging, they are losing some of that kinetic energy as heat as they warm up the air round about them. The string that they're tied onto will also be warming up as it rubs against the string up above. For the next demonstration, I'm going to use some jumbo lollipop sticks and show the transfer of potential energy into kinetic energy in what will be quite an exciting display. To set this up, you want to cross one popsicle stick over the top of another one. Your next popsicle stick you want to place underneath the top of one and over the top of the other so it's bending the popsicle stick. You then want to add another one which goes underneath the first one and over the top of the third one. And you keep doing this down a line until you've got as many popsicle sticks together as you want. So what is happening when I am bending the popsicle sticks over and under each other. The popsicle stick does not want to be bent. It wants to pull itself back into a straight line. If you have a popsicle stick and you start to bend it, you can feel it pulling against your fingers, trying to pull back into a straight line. That is because you're giving it potential energy and it's trying to turn it into kinetic energy to straighten up. Once I have weaved a line of all of these lollipop sticks crossing over and bending and let go at the end, all of the lollipop sticks suddenly use that potential energy they've got to pull themselves back into a straight line and that is why all the popsicle sticks fly up into the air as they are all pinging themselves back into a straight line and throwing up the other popsicle sticks round about them. My final demonstration of this week is the one where I put my faith in science and put my face on the line. Here I have a four kilogram weight and I've tied string around it and I'm going to turn this into a pendulum and I'm going to demonstrate the conservation of energy in a matter which could be quite dangerous if my faith in science is misplaced. So you see I now have my weight tied up as a pendulum. I've pulled the weight back, it's touching my nose and when I let this go I am trusting that this is not going to come back and hit me in the face. I'm going to show this as one continuous take so that you can see there's no camera trickery here. So what is happening in this demonstration with the weight? 
Well, when I pull it back, I have given it potential energy like I did with the water bottles. When I let the weight go, it cannot gain any more energy than I have given it. So it cannot swing back up higher than where it started. This same premise works with roller coasters as well. A roller coaster, once it has been pulled up to the top of a track and dropped down, it cannot then go higher than where it started unless you add more kinetic energy to pull it up another piece of track. Well, that's all for this week and as you can see, my face is still intact. If you've enjoyed this week's video, like and subscribe and share the video with your friends. I'd also like to say a special thank you to my friend Chris Manson who's done the new STEM with Mr N artwork and I've left a link in the description to where you can see some of his other artwork. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions that you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. And look out for a questions video coming soon. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring the conservation of energy.